An important event coming in, uh, given that Elon Musk is going to be visiting India and meeting Prime Minister Modi himself on 21st as well as 22nd of this month. So let's chat a little bit forward. You know, there is talk about Tesla coming to India. There are news reports saying that they've been tying with uh, Indian conglomerates for some of the Tesla infrastructure, if you will. So let's try and understand what does this really mean? What are the companies that stand to benefit? And what could be the sizable investment that's being talked about be of the nature of? We have with us Gaurav Angal, the country head, lead automotive uh, forecast at LVP, IHS Market. And we also have uh, editor Autocar India, Horma Sarabji, joining in on the show right now. Gentlemen, both of you, thanks so much for taking the time out and joining in. Horma, if Tesla joins hands with India, this is going to be the second biggest victory in inviting MNCs for manufacturing here after Apple's entry in the recent times. Tell me, what does this really mean for Tesla in India in terms of, you know, sort of changing the color of uh, auto manufacturing here in India? Well, I think, you know, um, let's talk about what it means for India because uh, Tesla is uh, the poster boy of the EV world. Uh, Elon Musk definitely is. Uh, it's a big trophy to get a a brand or a company like uh, Tesla, which really has uh, pioneered uh, the mass adoption of uh, EVs globally. Uh, but I think uh, for Tesla, uh, obviously, India is a market, uh, a, a, the last uh, large untapped market for Tesla in that sense. Uh, but I think uh, coming here, uh, you know, uh, models which uh, sell uh, in its other key markets uh, may not necessarily have, uh, uh, let's say, that much demand here because what we need are really low cost uh, and affordable EVs. And we've seen that Tata Motors, uh, by adopting that uh, approach, has taken 90% of the market. Clearly, they've had the first mover advantage over here. So I think, uh, you know, it's not going to be easy for Tesla, but, uh, you know, Tesla uh, really has advantages in terms of software, in terms of uh, all the uh, EV bits. It's really, really very strong battery technology, that sort of thing. And uh, it's going to be very interesting, but uh, I think, uh, you know, it's going to, going to be a while or uh, if at all we see uh, Tesla even uh, making a dent in this market. Gaurav, let's get in your take. It would be the second biggest victory inviting manufacturers and MNCs for, you know, really uh, making a, a mark in India. Just wanted to get in your take. Do you concur with Hormaz that it'll still be a work in progress, a little bit of time before we can see things finally unfold? And how would you look at uh, the plans for Tesla in India? I think uh, I agree with Homas, but yes, it is it is going to take some time and we, we would, would like to wait for the proper announcement from the Tesla uh, before we uh, conclude anything. But one thing is clear here um, that if, if Tesla enters the market, it is going to benefit the complete ecosystem. Uh, the new technology will enter, uh, the new supplier belt will enter, and we may see that uh, Indian suppliers or the existing suppliers will also get benefit of with the new business. Uh, the second thing is that it is not if if Tesla comes, they need a scale. It is they should they cannot rely only on the domestic market. They have to go out for the export market, and that is what for India is looking for. I think that is the reason uh, we have recently launched the new EV policy. So we we need to see that how how they are going to scale up the market and how which markets from India they are going to target because Tesla is already available in the three production hubs, which is the US, uh, Germany, and uh, China. And let and they they are expected to come to the Mexico also. But let's see that how India is going to add to their uh, production basis. Gaurav, so can Tesla do what Apple is trying to do in India, which is that gradually and surely they are targeting more phones which would be made in India for the world? Can can Tesla actually achieve that? See, intent is the same uh, from the from the government also and from the Tesla also. Uh, they can do that, uh, uh, but they need to they need to strategize well that where from where they are going to source the vehicles and which markets they are going to uh, target from Indian production basis. Hormuz, uh, for a EV buyer or prospective EV buyer, Tesla is the biggest brand. If Tesla comes to India, can it really cannibalize the EV market? I mean, let's say Tata's. They have a very large market share in the entire EV market. So can a company like, can an interf Tesla cannibalize the existing uh, EV players? Um, well, I, I think, you know, we've seen how the market operates. It's uh, very, very dependent on affordability. 
Uh, I mean, I think the the Tata example uh, is uh, really one of that. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily the best or the most high tech product uh, that wins. In fact, the Nexon, which uh, you know the best selling EV, was basically just an ICE conversion. Uh, obviously, those were early days, but I think, uh, you know, you need to have a nuanced approach uh, to the Indian market. Uh, it's a very, very challenging market. We've seen other superstars uh, in the auto world come here and fail badly. I mean, notably being Carlos Ghosn uh, had a good start, but uh, Renault Nissan, uh, well, you, you know, it, it's in doldrums now. I mean, that's partly because he's gone as well, but you take something like Stellantis, you know, Carlos Tavares, uh, you know, uh, this is one market that has actually so far tripped him up. Uh, so it's not easy at all. And uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, it uh, really depends on what product offering they have. I doubt the product is going to be uh, super cheap. Uh, of course, the imports will have some disruption in the slightly higher end because at 15%, uh, you know, it is it is very, very attractive. But uh, that doesn't stop other OEMs, uh, notably, uh, uh, you know, MG with JSW from adopting a similar strategy as well. So I think, uh, you know, it, it, it all depends on the product. I know the earlier product, like the Model 3, which they were testing, it had serious ground clearance uh, issues. Uh, it had to go back to the drawing board. So I think, um, as I say, you know, India is uh, is uh, really a, a very tough market when it uh, comes to autos. And we've seen there's, there is a trend that the most successful companies, successful companies globally are not as successful in India at all. Gaurav, when you look at the uh, Tesla ecosystem, tell me what all would Tesla require that India can easily provide uh, with its current expertise and domain? I mean, as of this morning, there are news uh, reports already doing the rounds that Tata Electronics has already sealed a semicon deal with uh, Tesla. See, I think uh, India, India currently cannot provide anything except the uh, frugal base. Uh, but yes, uh, India can. India is 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 showing the uh, as an as an emerging market or a promising world right now. Uh, when when we compare with the other countries, so domestic market is going to grow, and I think we we are going to grow better than any of the top five countries uh, for the next one decade. And it, we were the best in the next uh, last decades also. Uh, but we are going to continue that. So we the only thing which we can provide is the promising uh, uh, promising domestic market. But at the same time. We will have a frugal, uh, frugal uh, cost structures which we can provide, and we already have a very uh, good base for the auto suppliers. Now, what we can, what uh, a Tesla can get benefit out of uh, another thing is that the Reliance. What we have recently heard from the media reports that Reliance is, uh, um, uh, they are talking to Reliance, and we have also know that we also know that Reliance also get the ACC PLI. And they are already with the five gigawatt hours. And I think the 10 gigawatt hours is already in the tender, the uh, 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 it's under the tender process. Uh, let's see that how the things are going to cover uh, here, uh, here around. But yes, um, India can play a good role uh, when we are talking about next 10 to 15 years. We are not talking about on the short term one for one or two, three years. We are talking about having a base for the EVs, developing the EV ecosystem in the Indian market and for the world also. So, almost ultimately, let's understand and connect the dots here for our viewers. We are a business channel. One is this entire opportunity which will get created because Tesla comes to India, what it means for the Indian ecosystem, the supply chain, etc., etc. But for auto companies, which are really riding high on this entire transition weave of uh, EV, do you think irrespective of Tesla's entry, now the incumbent for the first time will have to face the heat of competition, whether it is Tesla or MG Motor, because now EV is a real deal and within that competition is also a real deal. No, absolutely. I think uh, the, uh, the the competition is definitely hotting up. I mean, uh, Tata Motors had an easy run uh, and hats off to them. Uh, they saw the opportunity early and grabbed it. But it's not that uh, they can be dislodged so easily because they are well entrenched into the, uh, you know, uh, let's say EV market. Uh, you see a lot of Tata cars with green number plates that automatically kind of positions them as the go-to uh, EV brand right now. Uh, but it's not just, uh, you know, I think 25, uh, 26, we're going to be seeing some serious uh, EV competition. Uh, we're going to see it coming in from uh, domestically, from Mahindra as well. 
Uh, we're going to see it from Maruti uh, and Toyota. They're going to launch their first EV, though it's been delayed by six months. It was to come out in 24. It's coming out in 25. Uh, that's going to have a lot of 50% uh, of that is going to be export already. And, uh, you know, you're going to see the Koreans as well. Uh, Hyundai and Kia are also going to be launching their EVs. And let's not forget the Chinese. You know, there's been, a, a, in a way, a sort of a side door entry with uh, with SAIC coming in with a min minority share in, in MG. Or they're diluting their share to a minority eventually in MD. And there's no reason why other why a company like BYD, which is really right now the big star in the EV world, even having overtaken Tesla in the last three months, why that BYD cannot have a similar arrangement of tying up with a local player as a majority partner as well. So I think there's a lot uh, going to be happening. And I think uh, the latter part, the next, uh, you know, the latter part of this decade is really going to see the uh, EV market uh, intensify dramatically. Question, almost if I look at, uh, you know, we tend to compare everything with China when it comes to trends and consumer demand. These are the data points in China. This is where India is. That's how it will has moved in China. This is how India would migrate. If one looks at the total EV market share in the passenger market in China, Hormuz, I think the number is 26 or 27 percent. And India is about one and a half to two percent. Are or we headed last year? Twenty-two percent, right? Is that the number? So two point three percent in India. Last okay, year. it's about one and a half to two. In China, it's about twenty-five to twenty-seven, ten times more. And the size of the market is very large. My point is that are we headed there gradually and slowly? It may not be 22, but it will certainly be 5 or 7 very soon. Well, look, I think, uh, you know, last year itself, EV sales almost sort of doubled. We're at about 100,000. So we're off a very small base. So yes, definitely the growth potential is huge. And, uh, you know, just 2.3 is nothing. But I mean, you know, there are certain uh, hurdles which uh, we've seen, like basically charging infrastructure and more specifically home charging infrastructure. I mean, if Tata Motors says that 90, 95% of its EV owners all have home charging, what that tells you is so many didn't buy the car because it wasn't home charging. So I think we have certain uh, issues along the way. And I think notably it is of uh, infrastructure mainly. I think uh, the pricing and affordability has been addressed very well by, I think, what is a, a fantastic policies by both center, uh, you know, with 5% GST, which really gives a, a fillip to it. And a lot of states which have waived off, uh, you know, local and road taxes. So I think... Uh, uh, and, and range uh, vehicles are getting better and better. So I think uh, uh, all the, the signs are there, uh, but I think, uh, you know, uh, it's it's a long way off and um, we are still a very, very strong ice market. And uh, I think I see that continuing. So, uh, you know, definitely the growth will be there, but I'm not sure how rapid it will be. Uh, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Gaurav, uh, thanks a lot for joining in as well.